This is where one of the products that I'm very interested in. Easy saying, this is probably in the UK now, one of our best, if not our best selling product that we actually do. Flow grade putty as they refer to in the US. Uh, in the UK we tend to refer to these sort of products as a stopper. Very, very fine filling properties, leaves a very, very smooth, flush surface. It self levels. So obviously on, on a surface, oh. such as a nice horizontal surface, it will self level itself out. Yeah. You're looking at being able to achieve, although we achieved here obviously with the Rage Ultra, a very, very fine surface yeah, I mean, finish. Dude, I'd say we're that's looking really at improving primer. that again and getting a surface finish that's close to that of a finished primer. Wow. Okay. So, once again, the emphasis here is on getting the good finish, minimizing the amount of primer that's going to be required to finish the repair. So, you would turn your primer into a sealer yeah. and you'd go one coat and you're done. Now, comparing this to competitors, there are competitive products on the market. You've probably heard of the, Dog, probably the, yep, the yeah. biggest selling one that's Dog on the market. Glaze. Whatever they might be, I'm not going to refer to any particular I, brand. Well, there I are several glaze type products there on the are, market. Yes. I've got to say, most of them have originated from copies. And one that does not surprise me. Product. So, Evercoat company then is more of a shepherd rather than a sheep. Ah, yes. Yeah, Come yeah. Back there, yeah, man, yeah. Fucking um, we get that all the time. <laughs> so, easy saying, if we compare it to probably the largest selling comparable products in the UK, all I'm going to say is bear in mind when you start looking at things like cost and price which is something we've not even discussed here today because we're no. looking at beyond the price yeah, of the product, it, yeah. at the quality of the product, what you can achieve, the standard repair, and how you repair and remove, oh sorry, how you um, improve on your process yeah. time. You get twice as much in one of these pump tainers as you do with the leading product in their yeah. typical packaging. Yes. Okay. You actually get 880 mils here. In a similar product, you might be used to seeing 440. Mm. It comes with a pump tainer. Which is quite unique in quite itself. Unique to us. Um, a little bit novel, a little bit different. Small aperture, small orifice. Yeah. Less contam less risk of contamination. Obviously, the cap is attached, so hopefully, Lovely. it's a good longevity. The sort of everything ever cope. Absolutely. Right. Let's get some of this out. Mixing ratios. Once again, if this was a, Excuse a you. sort of. <laughs> two inch puddle would be going halfway across the diameter with the hardener for what we're going to do we're going to add a little bit more to that for this that pump setup is really sweet that is like it's mm -hmm. things like that that set companies apart yep do you know what I mean thinking outside the box yep, there it goes so hardener once again nice ribbon of hardener across the center of the product uh, being blue, easy for identification. Once again, easy identification. <coughs> the mixing, obviously this one's a little bit looser. It's more like mixing a cream. So what you're basically saying is if you're a baker, you can use these products. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you want to eat them, but yeah. Some of them, I'll tell you what, some of them look good enough to eat. That fibre uh, tech is definitely one of them. I think you like the fibre tech. I love man. that fibre tech, man. Uh, the Fiber Tech and the Rage are like Rage on yeah. my list at the moment. Yeah, man, really, really good. I mean, where you're not going to find these products, you're not going to find these in a in a hobbyist center no. or or your typical sort of where you would go and buy maybe a bulb or mm -hmm. some product for your car at this the weekend. This is professional grade stuff. Industry. Yeah, this professional grade stuff, right? Yeah. Once again, you can see I'm using that squeezing motion, expelling the air, squeezing the air out as we're mixing. And it's the little things like this that make the difference by taking a little bit of time over your mixing and thinking about what you're doing, mm. removing the air, minimising the chance of pinholing. And you notice we're not even talked about pinholes yet, we've not come across any. No. Another little hint and tip. You'll notice there, I've stopped and I've cleaned my spreader before application. The reason for that is, nine times out of ten, you'll notice when you look at your spreader, the product you've got on there, you'll have some unmixed product in there. You don't want that to get into your repair. You'll end up with a, a soft or a sweet mm. spot that will have to be dug out and refilled more process so once again a little tip there clean your spread off before you you go for application application just like the other products previously we're going to start the very small amount and we're going to work it i just want to note say as well the middle out the, the entire repair area this wasn't feathered out the repair wasn't like if this you've is got just a, hole, a clear like, coat again you know what i mean it was a it was a it was a um, like a like a 
oh, bloody hell, a chip, yeah. shall we say, but we didn't feather out the chip like no, the chip, normally. The chip in the centre, I, feathered, I did feather by hand. Did you give it a little tickle? I did. We want to make sure we get good adhesion there. Indeed. If the paint was completely broken, looked like it was going to fail, it was going to peel back or something, mm -hmm. then we'd have to go for a feather edge, particularly yeah. possibly down to the bare substrate. Yeah. Problem is, when you expose the bare metal, you're exposing it to the elements around us. Mm -hmm. Now, as much as we'd like to, we can't really control the environment around us as well no. as we'd like to. But these products are fit for direct metal use. They are fit for application direct to metal. It's when you start getting into the realms of applying them into clear coats, is when you start needing the premium resins, the yep. high adhesion additives that we use. Look at it. It's to just ensure. the adding technique that amazes me. Well, what I'm trying to do, you notice I'm spreading, I'll just slow down and we'll do it a couple more times. I'm spreading around the edge of the repair because mm -hmm. I want to keep the build in the center. Yeah. So just by slightly tapering the angle of the spreader. Yep. Yeah, we can talk about angles. We'll do a quick, we'll do a, a Q and A session, and answer anything you guys may want to know. Or Once again, you notice I feathered the edge. I'm not leaving too hard an edge around the outside. It's a little thing that keeps it now. Me, he? After we've applied this, I chat a lot, don't I? <laughs> Maybe it's my nerves. It's because you're freaking Cockney, man. That's why. But there's nothing wrong with Cockneys before you lot start freaking messaging me. Say something like this to cut for me. Yeah. Right. I'm going to come that we can see now the product is yeah. gloss to the surface, it's starting to flow out nicely. We've got yeah. the build in the centre where we want it. Yeah. This repair, once again, will finish similar to the Rage Ultra. Look at that, you can 240 see. finish. Doing it before your eyes, man. Let's have a look at this again. This is this product before we, we waste any of this product. We'll whip some air into it. Here we go. Because this is a Victoria you know, sponge. Absolutely. You know, we, have, we can get pinholes. Even I can get pinholes. Getting them isn't a the problem, it's how we deal with them afterwards. Yeah. Or what we can do to deal with them. But if we can minimise it or prevent it in the first place, all the better. So nicely whipped up, lots of air in there. Here's a typical application that I see on quite a regular basis. We get some product. We go like this. And there's the air. We'll drag it out like that. There's the air. Then you might, if you're a bit conscious, maybe taper the edges a little bit, some people don't. I'll even see things like this. Oh God, yes. <laughs> Commonly. <laughs> yeah. Now what we'll do is, as an interesting exercise, we'll leave that <coughs> inappropriate application there. Yeah. When we sand the, the repair we have over here, we'll break the surface of that open at the same time and we'll see just what the results are. Indeed, right, let's let it cure and... Uh, Eight minutes, we're back to sanding that. Sweet spot. Right, so the easy sand repair here, small repair. We've applied that, we've allowed it to cure about eight, nine minutes into the yeah, cure now. Long. Applied some guide coat. We'll have a look at the repair first, and then we're obviously going to come back to this example of pull application. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference. P120 abrasive, no need to start with anything coarser. 120 or 180. In fact, for easy sound, you can see once again, no weight on the block. No. It sounds good, that nice, crisp sound. I can't get over how well they sound. sound. That's what, I mean, it's not, it, and it's not just the easy sound, it's every single product. Yep. I mean, every single product. Well, it's time, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's obviously, it's, you want it to sand down quick because you want to be there all day rubbing it down and end up with arms like Popeye at the end of the day, but no, no. it's speed, it's time. But I, I will guarantee that all these products will get, I mean, if, you, if, if you're using products now where, you know, you're doing it just to get it done, blah, 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 blah. You want to get back into having fun, and I've said this before, you want to have fun with the products you are using. Right, so still on the easy sand, obviously this repair now, we've got that finished, very, very fine surface finish. I don't can see any pinholes in there. Hopefully you won't find any. No, dude, there's nothing. Of course not. <laughs> keep leaving them out. I keep forgetting to put them in the mix. That's the thing. What we're going to do now is we're just going to break the surface of this pore application open. This is the one that so we can see. try the air pockets Absolutely. and stuff this like that. Out. Remember, we mix it up, we've whipped a load of air into it. This is what half the repairs We applied it right in one here. thick layer using no pressure. We just dragged it across the surface. Yeah. So let's have a little look. <laughs> Sand it right down, just need to have a look at the surface. And obviously 
Actually, there you go, there's your pinholes. Just blow it off, and then we'll really see them. Very, very large air bubbles. Yep. Same products we used here. Obviously, better application, more consideration to the mixing. Yep. And has given us a dramatic difference it's in the, surface this finish. Is foundation, yeah, yeah, it's your finishing product. So this is where you're now saving, you're saving process time. This would need, in a repair scenario, to be rectified. We'd have to do something about them pinholes. Yeah. They'd need further filling. Yeah. Um, even our 440 Express wouldn't deal with the very big ones. So once again, we need to mix product, apply it, allow it to cure, sand it. So it's time, more product, more abrasives. Yep. So we, yeah. I mean, normally what? Three, four coats of primer. Uh, I with this with this sort of process and the products we're using today, I should expect you to be down to more likely two, and two coats of an appropriate primer, maybe not necessarily high build primer. So like a sealer, like a surfacer. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, on the filler repair, now let's look and bring it out here. And improve the scratch pattern around the repair so it's not just limited to the body filler itself dude that is some next level stuff that's the application i'm slowing this right down so we don't really miss anything turn the cloth over clean area of the cloth and all we do is just remove that excess <laughs> yeah can i get a suitable with that? That, yeah suitable <laughs> with any any type of lint free cloth really the only cloth that i've noticed doesn't work very well is their microfiber cloths yeah. and that's because they're designed specifically to try and pull everything off we're trying to lay something down. Wow. Now, if you can get in there close enough, you might find it's picked up on the old little micro pinholes. We've got a little cluster just down here. Yep. And we've got the old little rogue pinholes here and there, which I say with that type of product, we were expecting to see. Yeah. God. That's pretty flipping awesome, that mm. one. Wow. Once again, just like everything else, but you know, keep it in the best condition you can, lid on as soon as possible. 